66. Wait, no, 67. Uh, mm, 80, 80, uh, 81, 80, 81. <laughs> Can't decide if it's 80 or 81. There's just a little, little sliver left. <laughs> 87, really? <laughs> No, the scale turned off. <laughs> no, I think that was that was that was going to be ninety. I will just do a double check because we are baking and it needs to be exact. <laughs> Take the butter off. I have like one one clean finger. That okay. Be exactly ninety. Exactly ninety. <laughs> It's 88. <laughs> 89, 90, 89. That'll, that's close enough. There we go. There is 90. And we just put that straight in. We're smushing that up with our hands very soon. Pretty sure it said to do it with the back of a knife for some reason. But no, we'll, we won't be doing that with a knife. Okay, so that was how much? About that much. Actually, I should have really checked how much butter that was totally, because then we would have. I could have figured that out easier just by cutting into it, probably. 93. Nine, really? 92? <laughs> what? Not so much. Exactly 90. Excellent. And that one. Oops. I won't do that again. <laughs> Flower just went everywhere. Also, our butter is cold. It's still very cold, but it's a little bit melty, which is nice. That's exactly what we want. Yeah. 72, I'm gonna have to open. Actually, I'll use up the very last bits of this pack and maybe that'll be perfect. That'd be, that'd be nice. It's way too much. <laughs> And yes, if anyone else has some fun proposal stories, do let us know. 88 grams. 89. Or even just like the way that you met your best friend. A good friend that I went to the birthday party yesterday, that's how Josh and I first ever met actually. I went to primary school with her and then she moved away, moved across the state and then she went to school with Josh. And then many years later had a birthday party, it was a pyjama birthday party and I went, Josh went and then we met. So that's, that's a fun story. <laughs> He was the only one not wearing pajamas, I might add, so I was uh, I was a little bit annoyed that some guy just rocked up without any pajamas. He thought he was too cool to be wearing pajamas like the rest of us. So I went up and I hassled him. I was like, what? Did you just miss the memo? <laughs> Where's your pajamas? Do you not have pajamas? And then 12 years later, here we are in our own house, engaged with a little pup. Okay, my hands are super clean, so I can start just 
molding this in for the consistency of breadcrumbs, it said. <laughs> yes. I ended up with a guy who didn't wear pajamas. Yep, that is exactly what happened. And he said it's because he doesn't wear like pajama pajamas to bed. He just wears like regular clothes. I was like, mm-hmm. And it's true, I can confirm. He just wears regular clothes to bed. He doesn't he doesn't do pajamas. But I'm glad that I hassled him nonetheless. So I might put the rest of this butter, this giant block of butter, back in the fridge. But just for now. And maybe the milk. Instructions. Okay, we're going to be rubbing in the butter until the mixture is consistency of breadcrumbs, and then we'll slowly add in the milk and use a butter knife to combine. Ah, <laughs> I thought it said the back of the knife. I was reading it when I was sleepy, so that's all right. So we do just rub it in with our hands. I was going to say that would be easiest. I don't want to do that, that with a knife, and that's not what it was telling me to do. Okay. Yes, but that is the way that I met my bestie who I went to birthday party yesterday. It was through primary school. And then I had another bestie there who I met through university. Because <laughs> um, I literally ran after her after class one time to ask her a question. And then I asked if she wanted to go out for coffee. So, yeah. I like hearing about how people have met other people. It's fun. Especially when it's the start of like an incredible relationship, like a friendship, a relationship. Those are fun stories. Oh, and fair, love wearing comfy hooding and legging, leggings to sleep. Yes, I am the same. Not so much in in our house, in this house, but in the places we've rented beforehand, um, they've not had good insulation and it has been extremely cold. So I, a lot of the time, have just worn like a super warm hoodie to bed and like track pants. <laughs> None of the like, the, the thin like, Lanolette kind of pajamas but here is actually like pretty warm in our house at all times so we have a lot of insulation so I don't need to wear a hoodie to bed Definitely can't really remember how I met people. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun thing to think about. Josh and I are actually this year doing like Operation Make Friend because it's been a while since we've actually gone out and like met, met people. Okay, this is getting more and more breadcrumb like, which is good, that's what we want. And I think we will listen to the instructions. We will use a butter knife to combine with the milk because I can see how that would get quite gloopy. Oh, 
Also, our oven usually only takes about 10 minutes to heat up, so I definitely could have just not turned that on already and turned it on later. Uh, most people I met over at Discord, but have one friend that I met at summer camp like seven years ago. I went to concerts together all the time. Oh, that's awesome. I miss the days of summer camps. Not that I really went to any, but it was like, there was, a, there was a few when I was younger that I went to. Did you ever go to summer camps? No, never. No, Josh never went to summer camps. Did you? Not really. Yeah, I think there's much of a thing in yeah. Australia. I've never like heard. maybe it's all the snakes we have. They're like, yeah. you know what? We might be liable having a whole bunch of kids out here mm -hmm. during summer in, in, in Australian summer with snakes around. Mm. Maybe that's why. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Chris, wait. Do people go out with the intention of meeting people? Apparently, apparently they do. Yes, I even saw there was, um, I was looking on Facebook, because Facebook's a good way to like find events. Um, there's like a pasta making course, and it's like a, a whole day thing where you just get to make different types of pasta and you get to eat them whilst looking out over a, over a vineyard and drink wine. And I was like, that would be, if, if we were to make like solid, solid solid friends that'd be a, a good way to do it i think but then i saw it was like 180 dollars per person <laughs> i was like Ooh, not yet <laughs> maybe when we're rolling rolling in the dough <laughs> then we can you know willy-nilly spend 180 dollars <laughs> probably not probably not Speaking of pasta making, by the way, I can totally just do that at home with you guys because you guys are also my friends. And I do have that pasta maker that I have not even used yet. So that's that's a good future stream. Probably the stream that I make carbonara actually. Also, look at the, the colour difference. This one's super yellow. Because it has all the butter mixed in. <laughs> what do you plan to make friends? Maybe Bunnings or Coles? <laughs> yes. We do go to Bunnings a lot. A lot, a lot. But I was thinking about that. I would like to bring Addie to Bunnings because she's, she's just not seen much of the world, which I don't feel is fair. I feel like she, she should be able to see more of the world. She loves the world and she loves everybody in it, so we need to take her more places. And just about every time we go into Bunnings, which if anyone doesn't know, it's a, a hardware store, like the biggest one we have here in Australia. Um, every time we go in, there's always someone with their dog. I thought that would be a cool way to meet someone. It's like, oh, I don't know, like our, our dogs interact and they get all excited and they're, the dogs are best friends. And then, oh, bam, we're best friends. <laughs> so yes, bunnings, definitely. No, I have thought about it. I wear that all the time, so, so just, just statistically, <laughs> we could. Um, I was also thinking at the beach. You go to the beach a fair bit. It's actually a wonderful beach day today. Cloud looks amazing outside the window. So we're going to the beach a little bit later today. We're going to make some hot chocolates and Josh and I are going to, well, actually I didn't think the weather was going to be this nice today. So I thought we were just going to sit in the car and watch the waves roll in because yesterday was so stormy. There was like lightning and thunder and so much rain, like an insane amount of rain. So I didn't think today would be a good beach day so I thought we would just sit in the car watch the waves roll in um, bring Addie as well and just yeah take in the ocean but I think we can actually probably go to the beach given it's nice and sunny and no rain in sight so we don't really have too much planned for our 12 year anniversary today aside from 
hanging out at home, going to the beach and having a bit of a movie night tonight. <laughs> and rich friends here. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be cool. Make some rich friends. For the whole game, that would be nice, actually. <laughs> I feel like we'd also have to keep up with Richie Rich Friends. That's blows like 180 on <laughs> pasta making classes each. And in fact, I don't think it was all day. I think it was like over a lunchtime period. So I was like, oh, that's a lot of monies. And yes, homemade pasta is so yum. Yes, we'll, we'll definitely be making some homemade pasta, that's for sure. I got a little pasta maker for, uh, for free from my local Buy Nothing group. Which, if anyone doesn't know, it's all around hyper-local gift giving. Just about every place has their own, like every place in the world basically has buy nothing group and if you don't then you can start one yourself which is really cool and that's also another great way to make friends actually which I've had a few potential <laughs> potential friendos that's cool we every you know when you look on the Facebook group everything's gonna be for free which is awesome so I saw a pasta maker that um, someone just literally never used it was sitting in their garage and they were giving it away because they're like nope it's just taking up space and now it is my pasta maker boysy dogs and bunnies <laughs> yeah cinnamon rolls and hot cocoa beach trip sounds lovely it does little Addy in the back. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but Addy had her first ever puppuccino the other week, about two weeks ago, which was just the most exciting thing ever. We went to the beach, well not down to the beach, but we we're up on the cliff face overlooking the beach, and yeah, Addy had a puppuccino and it went everywhere. She got like I think it's like whipped cream maybe and it had little bacon bits in it and it went everywhere it went all over her head because <laughs> she was licking it so fiercely that she just licked it all over her head she got on her paws it was like all up my arm it was it was madness it was right before we went out to lunch and i was like well i am covered covered in bacon bits and whipped cream <laughs> but it made her so happy, so it was worth it. When you try that here, people tend to not want to get the free stuff. They'd rather buy, they'd rather buy it new. Oh, that's definitely not, not my style. If I can get something for free, I'm gonna just, it's, I find it just so satisfying to find something. That's why I love, thrift shopping so much because it's like a treasure hunt i've always got like a little list in my phone with all the things that i want to find from an op shop when we go it's like antique shopping it's but without the hefty hefty price tag so i love that and a lot of the time they have like free things as well so i've got some really cool old timey cookbooks from op shops for free a lot of the time Books can be free at op shops, so I haven't, I haven't even shown you, but I have a stack of books, like of free books over there. My hands are super buttery at the moment, so I won't grab them out, but I find it so satisfying when I'm looking for something and then I find a really, really good deal on it instead of overpaying. Because overpaying, I don't know, it just never feels, I never find it. It's, 
it feels good to me. So free things, yay. At thrift stores do not really exist yet. Oh. Okay, well, that is sad. Dang. Dang, dang, dang. Yeah, Harley. Welcome, Harley. Guess what, Harley? We are making the 400 cinnamon rolls. And you had a huge part in this because I remember you saying cinnamon rolls at some point. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you planted that in my mind, cinnamon rolls. <laughs> and then a few other people were like, yes, do the cinnamon rolls. Congrats. Oh, 400. Oh, we're now at 428. Woohoo! <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. How are you doing, Harley? How's things? I'm gonna go wash my hands because they are, you know, back my face. Desperately had to wipe my face as well because it's like a hair that's bugging me and it's bugging me again. <laughs> I couldn't do it or else I'd wipe buttery dough all over my face. Oh, and thank you very much for the hydrate. Yes, I haven't, I haven't ugh, done that in a while. I'm gonna hydrate with my tea. drink bottle. I haven't had much oil. Well, the lid's not on. That could have been a disaster. I could have just dropped all that water in our beautifully buttery crumbly cinnamon roll mix. Imagine that. I'm gonna not drink any liquids by these because that would be awful. It's almost a disaster. I'm doing good. Spent the day watching Audrey do another stream IRL in her backyard. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, we we just had daylight savings, so our time zone is even more different now. So every time I get a notification that Audrey's on, I'm like, I'm sleeping. Or I wake up and I see the notification. So yeah. But yeah, I hope you're doing well. And yes, 400 cinnamon rolls. 400. Let's see where we're at now. I think it was pour the milk in with a butter knife. Yes, slowly add the milk and use a butter knife to combine. I'm not sure why it has to be a butter knife, but we're gonna do it. But we're gonna do it. How much butter do we need though? No, we've done the butter. How much milk do we need? We don't, we don't need any more butter. Um, 170 grams. Okay. You got this. Thank you. Huh. Did this just fall back? I don't remember moving that. I do not remember moving that. Weird. <laughs> We're using almond milk because that is my favorite milk of choice. 170 grams, which is two thirds of a cup. Okay. We're doing it, 170. Ah, these spouts are annoying. Oh, they're so annoying, it's going everywhere. 170 seems like a lot. Uh, 150. 
I know it said to do it slowly, but I don't want the, the scale to time out. 167. 100 and, oh, 170 exactly. <laughs> also worried that intense. I was worried that the scale was going to time out. So I just poured it all in basically at once, which you know what? I'm sure that's fine. I will now combine it with the butter knife. Oh, could probably also use chopsticks. Yeah, so that is a good idea. I would have to find our chopsticks. That seems like so much milk. And what does it actually say? Saw the other milk, use a butter knife to combine. Turn out the dough and knead until it forms a smooth ball. Okay, I think it's at that point that we will we'll combine. Maybe. If they're not if it's not too much to handle, we might combine them all into one, because that would be that would be fun. <laughs> and Derpy Trolls, welcome in Derpy. <laughs> like your your Pikachu emote there. <laughs> And how's Addie and Josh? They are both doing well. Addie was being a little sook before though. She was crying and crying and crying. And then we, we realized that it's because we had a cat on our driveway. So she could see her from the front window. So she was crying and running back and forth. But then Josh went out and shooed the cat away because Addie was getting distressed. <laughs> she doesn't usually cry. So I was, I was almost getting distressed listening to her little baby wails. But yes, Addie is doing excellent. I was saying before, but she had her first ever puppuccino the other week, two weeks ago on my birthday. And it was glorious. It had little bacon bits. It went everywhere. You know, I think that is, that's pretty well combined. There we go. On to the next one. Try pouring with a spout on top when it's a full, <laughs> yeah, full carton. Yes. So I appreciate Alex electric mixer. Yes. I do have an electric mixer, but I don't want to over mix it. I figured I am making 400, so I'll, I'll try and follow the recipe as closely as possible. With the exception of I'm using almond milk. I think that's the one difference. Yeah. 170 grams. Okay. There you go. It's a little easier to pour now that it's not so full. 120, 140. Well, that goes quick. 150. Okay. 160. 170 exactly. Okay. I was getting too eager with that one. I have so much spaghetti leftovers. Yes, spaghetti I made with ground beef and then have plates of pasta with the meatballs. That sounds delicious. I'm also planning on making a spaghetti. Well, we bought a big, big thing of minced meat because it was uh, the most affordable way the most affordable pack out of all of them. And I really, really, really felt like spaghetti. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy. I just saw I have another box of food. And pasta with meatballs. <laughs> Excellent. I don't think I could ever get sick of pasta. I think Pasta is just the best, the best food. I actually had that question on a podcast that I did 
well that I was invited onto my first ever podcast invite by this big small world who's awesome another fellow Aussie um he was doing a podcast with myself and Annika who um specializes in cakes she makes a whole lot of cakes and yeah it was all around like food and drink streamers and just like chatting and asking questions and it was a really fun time and that was one of the questions was like what what's your favorite what's your favorite thing to make and my answer was definitely pasta related and then I talked about pasta for a while and um if you if you have been here for a while you would have known that I have recreated my grandma's pasta dish her chorizo pasta dish which is like one of my all-time favorite meals and I thought she would have had a recipe somewhere because when she passed away last year I got all of her recipe books um, and there's many 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 like folders big big folders and I still need to go fully through them and just take photos of all her handwritten ones which I haven't done yet because that's quite the task and I've gone through them all I've read I've, I've seen all her handwritten ones and she doesn't have the chorizo pasta <laughs> recipe because she made it so many times that she just did it from memory and she never wrote it down so yeah I've tried recreating that three times now I think twice on stream maybe and then one time off stream which was that was the closest time I've come when I made it off stream it has like coconut milk and tomato and a whole range of other things I don't know how I feel about using a knife by the way. I feel like it's really difficult to get the bottom bit. Never ever do I mix things in with a knife. I do actually have a very cool Danish whisk. So cool in fact that I bought my dad one as well because he's an excellent cook. So I feel like this would be a better job. I feel like yeah maybe I'll just use that instead. Oh yeah, so thank you very much for the shout out, Josh, for um, Big Small World. This Big Small World, they're awesome. Definitely go chuck them a follow. They're lovely. They're so creative. The other day he made, <laughs> it was a fruit sandwich. And he got different ingredients to look like different ingredients. It was, it was, it just blew my mind. I'm like, wow, this is creative. <laughs> it was awesome. He used like watermelon. Um, as like the, the meat and yeah a whole bunch of other like substitutes and made like a fruit sandwich in on brioche bread as well which is the best bread <laughs> oh and Pete welcome hello <laughs> hi Pete so sorry I was I was oh, talking about pasta wasn't I how are you doing Pete how's things yes 400 cinnamon rolls you say and yes, knife can also scratch the glass. That's what I, I felt like it was scratching the gra glass. I can't quite see it, but that's why I've been so cautious. So I'm gonna swap it out for the whisk. If I can find it. Where is the whisk? I haven't used it in quite some time and I do actually need to clean out this drawer. So I do the cooking, obviously, and then Josh does the dishes. So a lot of time he puts away the dishes in places where I don't know where they go. You know where the whisk is? The baby whisk. Yeah, that's where I thought I saw it. Yeah, I thought I saw it there as well. Yeah, oh, hello, it's actually that's where you are. It's fine. Oh. There it is. There it is. Hello, hey. stream. 
<laughs> You're working up an appetite, are you, Dot? Yes, very excited. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I'm going to swap out. I don't want to use this knife anymore. I do feel like it would be scratching. And also, it's an awfully sharp knife or a butter knife, but I feel like all of our knives that are butter knives are slightly too sharp. So, yes, yeah, so this is the Danish whisker that I bought. I loved it so much that I got my dad one. That's better. Yes, yeah, because it's in a in a curve so I can get the bottom of the bowl now instead of yeah the knife just kind of scratching and not doing a good job at combining it there we go that's so much better yay I should have done that a whole bowl ago I'm some chat in that <laughs> use your hands then you can lick your fingers <laughs> that is that is a good point that is definitely point to using your own hands. Yeah, I figured because it's going to be so sticky. And I used my hands before when I was um, melding in the butter. That I was like, hmm, I'll swap it up. I'll do what the recipe says in terms of use your hands for the, the butter. But then when you put the milk in, use a utensil. Yes, and big spoon probably better than the knife, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Next. Next batch. Let's welcome in Droid Insanity. Thanks for being here and watching me make 400 cinnamon rolls. Hundred and seventy. We're at 150, 167, 169, 170. That's awesome. I did exactly 170 in all of them. I just find the cap and put the milk back in. Also, I'm pretty sure Josh was snacking. There is the cap. Uh oh. Ah, he was snacking. <laughs> 20 times on stream. Josh never resets the Kiana. Is that pistachio milk? It is almond milk. Almond milk, that's my favorite kind of milk. Oh, and Holly, I woke up early to my stomach hurting. Oh, and honestly, spending time with Audrey and more friends on Twitch definitely helped me feel better. Oh, well, I'm sorry that you woke up with a sore stomach. I know that life. I definitely know that life. So glad that hanging out on Twitch with Audrey and other friendos is making you feel better. A bit yeti. <laughs> Wait, right ball under. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So my left. Yep. <laughs> Yes, I should have asked for help. I thought I should have just looked on the screen actually. That probably was more helpful than me looking over the top of these bowls. Oh yes, this whisk is so much better than a knife. And yes, I agree, I feel like a spoon would do even better than a knife. I just figured I'd try it because I never do that. Usually when I see a recipe, like a baking recipe, and it says mix it in using a butter knife, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna use a spatula. But I figured I'd try it out. I'd test it out. And I can confirm I'm not a fan. So I didn't like the feeling of the knife like scraping on the on the bowl. This is so much nicer. I feel like that's combined even better than 
this first one. So I might even. Yeah. It has. There was even crumbly bits down in this first bowl, so. They're at. We always somewhat tweak a recipe to find out what works best. I'm very aware not everyone would have a Danish whisk, so I feel like a spatula would be perfectly fine. It's a very sticky. Okay, that's probably why they say don't use your hands because that is so sticky. And maybe with a spatula it might stick to it more. Maybe that's why they say the knife. But this is also stainless steel, so it has the same sort of effect. <laughs> you like adding to the channel more. <laughs> oh, welcome in Smurf. Hi Smurf, how are you doing? How's things? <laughs> Hope you're excited to see 400 cinnamon rolls. I'm very excited. I'm gonna check the recipe. So we've done the milk, the butter, the flour, the salt. Now we just need to turn out the dough and knead until it forms a smooth bowl. And then we've already got our rolling pin out. Okay, we're into the, the actual making of it now. So I'll put all these ingredients up out of the way. Also, I'm not sure at what point we add in the vanilla because I've it definitely hasn't said to do that yet. Just double checking. Flour, salt, butter. Yes. Milk. Yes. Hmm. At what point do we add in? <gasps> you know what? I feel like this recipe, they've missed. Oh, no, never mind. I don't, I think it might just be for the filling that we use the vanilla extract. I thought maybe it was in the dough as well, but it is not. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Ooh, it would be amazing to have some gloves. Honestly, would love to have some when I cook. Yep. <laughs> and you are correct, Viv, in the filling or as a glaze. Oh, and Smurf, I'm well, thank you. Never had a cinnamon roll before. Me either. I've never had one either. And I've never seen one in any bakery that I've ever been to. So I'm excited. I'm very excited. I think, I think I'm gonna love it. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. And then we're gonna start rolling these into bowls. This guy actually looks like an eight-year-old's picture outside with like the vibrant blue sky and then the super duper fluffy fluffy white clouds and it's like what I used to draw as a child with the I, don't think, I think there's a special name for them like the Mimbers clouds but like the comically fluffy fluffy ones You know what? There's a bit of milk that we spilled, so I might just wipe that out first. <laughs> Chewy! Wait, wait, what? What? <laughs> yes! 400 cinnamon rolls, and I've never had one before. There's so many things that I feel Australia just so behind the times in, desserts being one of them. 
Like we don't get snickerdoodles here. And the first time I ever had one was when I made them myself on a Halloween stream. And that's my, that's my all time favorite cookie now. Those snickerdoodles that I made. So good. I think the most Australian dessert we have are lamingtons and that I don't like lamingtons. I would never go out of my way to go buy a lamington. I feel like that's such a non-dessert, but it's like that's like the most Australian dessert I can think of. Cinnamon rolls are great and you'll definitely enjoy them, so will Josh. Mmm. <laughs> How have you never had a cinnamon roll and now you're making 400? Yeah, we just don't have them here. From what I've seen, every bakery that I've been to, and I've been on the hunt. I've been on the hunt because I want to have a cinnamon roll. I really wanted to have one so I could compare. I could know what a cinnamon roll is supposed to taste like and then make 400. I thought that would be excellent. So every bakery that we have passed in the last couple of months, really, because, yeah, I knew I was going to make cinnamon rolls for some time now. Um, they just, they don't have cinnamon rolls. So every bakery just, nope. And I really, really want them, so I'm gonna make my own. <laughs> but yes, Chewy, I assume you've had cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Were they delicious? I've only heard good things. Nimbus 2000. <laughs> Yes, scientific name, Nimbus 2000. I'm assuming that the tea is more like a savory version of a cinnamon donut. Mmm, I'd assume so. So we don't really have anything sweet in our dough. In fact, we have a little bit of salt in it. So that's what the recipe called for, but it's the filling and the glaze are very sugary and sweet. Oh, and what's a snickerdoodle? <gasps> they are like a... It goes my mouth just watering. <laughs> uh, just... My mouth is flooding. Um, snickerdoodle, they clearly are my favorite dessert because I can't even speak right now. <laughs> Due to all the saliva. Okay, a snickerdoodle is like a super soft, doughy cookie. Uh, just, it's like, Vanillary, cinnamony goodness. Yup. It's like a thousand times better than the Subway cookie. And I like Subway cookies. But yeah, they're like, they're super soft and plush and fluffy. It's almost like a, if a, if a brownie, like a vanillary cinnamony brownie had a baby with a cookie. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I definitely missed some chat there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it anyway and use Josh's room. Um, I was gonna scroll. <laughs> I totally missed some chat. I'm so sorry. But I saw Panther. Welcome in. Um, and something about Cinnabon stations and malls. Yes, we don't have cinnamon ball. Mm, cinnamon, Cinnabon. We don't have that here. I, I'm pretty sure. And I'm so sorry if I missed chat. My hands are in no state to scroll and use Josh's mouse. I don't think he'd be very happy with me. <laughs> but welcome in! And Panther, how are you doing? Just relaxing on this fine Sunday. Yes, it's gonna be relaxing with 400 cinnamon rolls very, very soon. Uh, I think vanilla slice is not really Australian, but a most common at bakeries. Yes, we do have a lot of cinnamon slice. Yeah, I, I feel like that's that's probably falling under Australian bakery. But yeah, Lamingtons is like the big one. And I just, I'm very meh about Lamingtons. I'd eat them if I was a kid. It's because I'd eat anything as a kid. Actually, I eat anything now. But at the parties when there was like a big, big thing of Lamingtons, I'd be like, mm, uh, well, okay, guess I'll add one to my plate. <laughs> Josh, what do you think about Lamingtons? What does everyone else think about Lamingtons? They're like very 
Sorry, what do you think of the Lamingtons? Yeah, bit meh the Lamingtons. I'll eat them if they're there, but... Yeah, I think that's that's the way for most people. I don't know anyone that's like, oh my goodness, Lamingtons. Yeah, they need like jam in the middle or else they're very like dry. Oh, I've never had one with jam in the middle. Yeah, they're not so bad with jam. They're so dry. They make your mouth drier and you, just, you, you don't want that from dessert. Yeah, no, the jam offsets the dryness, so it's significantly bruised. Yes. Yeah, I've never had one with jam. But yeah, they're just, they're like a sponge cake, but a dry sponge cake covered in the thinnest layer of non-chocolate, <laughs> like chocolate, non-chocolate covering that's like so thin and then rolled in coconut. So they, they just don't really taste like anything and they're kind of like air. So, yeah, no, we're not fans of Lamingtons here. <laughs> and yes, 400, that's a lot. 400 cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yes, they're going to be itty bitty mini ones. And I really hope I have enough. Mm. Now that I'm looking at the mixture, I thought it would have been a bit bigger, but we only tripled the recipe. We only tripled the recipe. We might have to double the tripling of the recipe. Eat. Oh, yeah, so sticky. So sticky. That's why we didn't use our hands to mix it, I think. <laughs> it's like impossible. <laughs> uh, you making your own frosting or did you buy something? Yes, we'll be making our own. Our own glaze to go on top. Definitely. Making it all from scratch. But we're also, it's it's like the simplest recipe I could find because some of the recipes out there for cinnamon rolls are so complicated and they take so much resting time for the dough to rise and a whole bunch of different things that I was like, nope, I'm going to do a yeast free version so we can just use self raising flour. And cut down our time and our thinking <laughs> um our need for thinking this is definitely the stickiest one by the way more flour i'm gonna combine them yeah that's what i'm gonna do i have one giant big thing <laughs> there we go Also, I didn't even check how many this makes from this recipe. Didn't even check. So I figure we're just gonna have to do what we can with the amount that we have. And we also, we have heaps of leftovers. We have lots of flour, we have lots of butter. So we can just make another batch if we need and I'll be quicker with it the next time anyway, because I've done it before. And Lamingtons. It's a sweet. Oh, damn it. I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> I missed the chat. We need to have like a pop out chat. I, th I think other like food and drink streamers have that so then they can see more of the chat. So I only have a very small, small window and then it moves. Josh, you should be on scroll duty. Are you able to remote in right now? That would be cool. But yes, I'm so sorry. I'm missing chats. La oh. <laughs> You like lamingtons? You think they're delicious? Wait, I feel like we're spelling them differently. Lamingtons. Ours are lamingtons. I think, are we thinking of the same thing? Yes, raised dough is the best. I know, but I figure first time making them and I'm making 400, I should probably try and simplify where I can. <laughs> Oh, I had something very similar to the Lamington before. It was basically also sponge cake with chocolate and coconut. Just googled and they're called Kapovichi. Kapovichi. And they come from. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> my old baking high horse self coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. 
that is all good. <laughs> and honey buns. I've not had a honey bun. It's spelled lamington. Okay. Yeah. Because that's how I spell it. And I was like, wait a minute. Are we talking about a different thing here? Okay. I think we're going to need some more flour, actually. Because it's getting a little too, too sticky. Before we do that, and now that I've washed my hands, I'm definitely going to read what we're going to do next. Spread some flour. Yes, I will. And thank you for the hydrate. We'll do all the things before I get stuck back into this. We'll get the trays out. I want to think about our filling. Ah, oh, delicious water. Yesterday. Um, at the birthday party there wasn't water but we brought our drink bottles thank goodness because I was so dehydrated okay and then we use a rolling bin and we roll it out and then we spread the softened butter over the dough so we do we need more butter and we leave a gap of two centimeters around the edges and then we combine the cinnamon and sugar in a small bowl and sprinkle over and then we start rolling and then we cut and then we put it in the baking tray <laughs> okay and it will rise in the oven obviously because we have self-raising flour so this will go further so we can make them tiny 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 because we need 400 and it says it's only going to take 20 minutes but we have a lot more that we're putting in the oven so it'll be it'll be more than 20 minutes so we'll just keep an eye on them and, and then we and then we'll think about our glaze after that. Really, it's the sugar, butter first, and then the sugar and the cinnamon, which I will check how much we need. So we need 60 grams of butter for the filling. And then one and a half tablespoons, but we're tripling that. So we'll get a little bowl. Am I too hungry to spell the word right? <laughs> yes. Okay, one and a half tablespoons of tablespoons. That's a lot of cinnamon. Tablespoons. I wonder if it says how many grams that is. Nope. That'd be good. If there's ever grams in baking, just go with the grams rather than trying to eyeball how much you think one and a half tablespoons of cinnamon is. But oh well, it doesn't have it and I'm not going to Google that. Uh, <laughs> no cinnamon challenge for me today. That is strong. <clears throat> it wafted. It's still wafting, I can see it just like swirling around. <laughs> and Another one. <laughs> see Josh is remoting into the computer and doing shenanigans. What you doing, Josh? I'm gonna count that as one and a half because that is so heaped. Yeah, I didn't get a word of that. <laughs> the amount of times I say that in a stream where I'm like, I didn't, I, don't, I didn't hear that, Josh. You know what I also can't hear though, Josh? The music. That's weird. I just realized that I can't hear the music. I have a little earpiece here so then it doesn't pick it up twice. 
I don't know if the song is just changing. Hmm. All right, sugar. A third of a cup of caster sugar. So it's gonna be a full cup of caster sugar for the <laughs> for the filling. Ugh, okay. Seems like a lot. But I think we knew what we were getting into. Hi, Addy. There we go. The music's back. Yay. Yeah, Ah, uh, okay. Josh just said when he remotes in, then I can't hear it. So now I know when you're remoting in. It's definitely a third of a cup, isn't it? Yep, and my time is up by three. This might be the most caster sugar I've ever used in a recipe on stream. Addie's looking for scraps. I just realized you didn't see any of that. Sorry. <laughs> the cinnamon. It's even worse than flour. It just... It like smokes up. Hi. I need longer arms. <laughs> uh, can you see that on camera? It's like wafting out to like here. Damn it, cinnamon. Maybe I should be wearing a mask. Should I be wearing a mask for this? <laughs> okay, I think that's sufficiently mixed in and it's still, it's still just wafting everywhere. We need butter and we need 60 grams. Uh, again, that's a lot, so we're timing it by three. But we're back to the butter. And he says hi. He's supervising over this side. He is. <laughs> Maybe I, I, I could put a fan on. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Lucian. <laughs> That's so loud. That's so loud in my ear. 